or eat food. So here you are, I give the stage. Thank you, Enrico. Your pronunciation is perfect. <laughs> my name is Sofia Amzian. I'm coming from uh, France. And it's my pleasure today to present to you the outcomes and the results of the technical committee that I chaired with uh, my colleague from the University of Rennes, Florence Collet. Uh, and the title of this technical committee is High Geothermal Behavior and Durability of Bioaggregate or Vegetal Based Building Materials. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are right. Um, first, I have just a short story because, uh, in fact, why I'm involved on digital concrete. Uh, we are not so much all in the other, uh, over the world working on this subject. Because, in fact, in 2004 I was in the United States, in sabbatical, at NIST. And coming back in 2004, I said, Maybe there is 10,000, 20,000 researchers working on concrete and I think they don't need one more or one less. Uh, I, I will not change the game. And also, uh, at this time, I read a lot of books on climate change. And I discover, in fact, I'm working on a material that emits a lot of CO2. Then I said, the only one natural uh, methodology to stock, to sequester CO2 is in fact the photosynthesis. There is no other ways to naturally sequester or simply sequester or stock CO2. Then I said maybe we can make concrete with vegetal. Um, I think at this time, 20 years ago, we are few persons thinking like this and with 10 persons in France, in Europe, in South America we decided to see how we can introduce vegetal in huge, massive use of vegetal to make some concrete. This is the beginning of the story uh, and then this is my main subject even I continue to provide some uh, time on the rheology of concrete, as uh, Dimitri presented just uh, before. Okay. First, this is this new technical committee. In fact, is the second one that I chair. Uh, the first one was between 2011 and 2016. TC 236. And we start with providing two outcomes, two important outcomes, the state of the art on the physical property of vegetal aggregate, mainly hemp sheath, because in France we have a lot of hemp. We decide to use this plant, the aggregate coming from the woody part of the stem, and uh, we uh, write a first book with the state of the art about the chemical composition of bioaggregate, water absorption, particle size distribution, all the properties of this type of aggregate. And the second item I think is more important and now is in use in all the lab involved on digital aggregate is a recommendation on how to measure this type, uh, the, the multiphysical properties of this type of aggregate. This is very important because before uh, the publication of this recommendation, we see that there is a large variation of the uh, data published in the literature, even about the density between, for example, 100 and 200 for exactly the same type of aggregate. And this discrepancy is coming of the methodology of the use, because there is no standard for such material, very specific material. Motivation. I think here we are in Kyoto, and uh, since uh, three days I'm visiting this beautiful city, the, and this beautiful city, um, it was an international agreement in 1997, 25 years ago, uh, aimed to reduce carbon dioxide, and 200 countries met together here in Kyoto and decide 
to reduce greenhouse gases emission. And you can see as illustration in this picture, this is the timeline versus the emission of GHG, mainly CO2, and that since 1860, before 1860, humanity is neutral carbon, because there is no coal, no gas, no oil. Then, in fact, the humanity was during 2,000 years, if we start at zero, which is not the case, but okay, during 2,000 years, we was a neutral carbon society and humanity. But since 1860, with the discovering of coal, gas, and oil, we start to burn fossil fuel, and we start to emit a lot of CO2. And 1860 is also the discovering of cement by the French guy Vicar, Joseph Louis Vicar. And we try to produce a lot of steel, a lot of cement, and emit a lot of, and, uh, a lot of uh, CO2. Then, 25% of this CO2 was emitted during the first 110 years. The second quarter during 21 years. And then Kyoto. And since Kyoto, we emit 50% of the CO2 of all the story of humanity. This is huge. Then I have a question for you. Since this agreement, has the Kyoto Protocol made any difference to carbon emission? You have 20 minutes to, to find the response. Now we are in 2022, just last year we have the COP. COP is conference of parties, 200 countries meet together again in Glasgow. And in Glasgow, they sign a new climate pact, and they say there is an emergency. Look, we have now we know that to keep in the order uh, the budget of two degrees Celsius, this is the maximum that we have in 2060. We need a neutral carbon society, a neutral carbon humanity. We have only 20 years to do that, 30 years to do that. If we want to keep the budget under 1.5 degrees, which is huge, because now we know this climate change just with 1.5, but 1.5 more, we need a natural carbon society, humanity in 2040. But for this, a natural carbon society implique, um, or uh, the, um, yeah, uh, we have to stop all oil, yeah, in place. Uh, we have to stop the use of coal, oil, and gas. How we can do that? Second question. Okay, um, the reality, this is the line in red, since 29, just uh, 2019, just before the COVID crisis, is exactly the reverse. We are continuing growing. Three important things to know. Emission of carbon is correlated to demography. This is a very important point. To the GDP of the countries, and the GDP is growing, okay, very important things, and also we didn't find a technology to replace this energy, coal, oil, and gas. Then, what about the contribution of the building industry, of the material industry? Building operation is mainly construction, materials, 11% of the CO2 emitted in the world is coming from materials, steel, concrete, glass, insulation material. Building operation is heating, air conditioning, how to call the buildings, and also maintaining the buildings. 
We have to know that concrete is implied as 5% of the total emission of CO2. All the plane industry is 5%. Cement is also 5%. In fact, the third country that emit CO2 is the concrete world after China and US and before India. This is huge. The concrete industry try to find solution. We have a lot of colleagues, maybe here, try to find low carbon cement. Okay? We have the cement Portland, which is the more material produced in the world, emits 670 kilograms of CO2 per ton of cement. The best solution now is 50-50 blend cement produce 335 kg of cement. But we have to know that this 50-50 blend cement, like LC3, clay, calcined, concrete, or represent only 1 or 2% of the production. The first one, 90% of the production, is the usual cement that you know. Okay? And all the people of our technical committee, we say, we are trying to pass from Coca-Cola to Coca-Zero. If you try to make a diet to lose some weight, you know that Coca-Zero don't work. We need more effort to have a solution. Now, how to change the game? If it's for your diet, we know that fruit and vegetables works, and some sport. Okay? For the construction material, it's exactly the same. To have a natural carbon buildings, we need to use vegetal, vegetal, vegetal. Because with this material, it's a real natural carbon material, we can reduce. And if you see the first page of uh, the cover of the conference, you can see that Kyoto is very proud of a building made with wood, the forest of bamboo, and the heritage. Only natural carbon, there is also the tower, but almost only heritage and natural carbon. And when I, when, when I go in all the world about conferences, they show the heritage. They don't show the modern and comfortable buildings. They don't show the standard. Then, in the mind of the people, they prefer to have a wood house or earth house than uh, modern buildings. Now, after this uh, maybe longer uh, motivation, I will go to some results of our technical committee. Uh, the number of technical committee, uh, we start in fact at the late 2016 and I would say we start in 2017, six years ago, um, and due to COVID crisis uh, we have a lot of delay on producing the results, on writing the, the papers. The number of KC active members was 24, 15 guest members coming from 15 labs, seven countries represented, six European and one from South America, the team of uh, my friend Romildo Toledo Filo from Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, one, uh, from Belgi uh, one lab from Belgium in Brussels, uh, two from United Kingdom, Anna Brass from Liverpool and uh, Sonnaby from Belfast, in France, four labs, Gustave Eiffel uh, University, Toulouse, Clermont-Ferrand and Rennes, and also Lorient, five. Uh, in Italy, the team of Francesca Titarelli from Ancona. Uh, in Portugal, Paulina Faria and Lina Nunes from Lisboa. And from Sweden, Pauline, um, Pauline de Brigne uh, from University of Lund in Sweden. 
we had 27 meetings in six years and almost all in visio and one midterm uh, conference in, Mar in Barcelona uh, ICBDM 2021 that I organized I, at uh, this uh, time. Uh, and also I want to, as Dimitri presented, uh, maybe 80% of uh, the, the participants and active members are female. Uh, I see that uh, all over the world in Earth uh, science and in bio-based uh, construction materials we can attract really easily uh, females. Okay, now, uh, we did in fact, around, mainly, we did a round-robin test uh, testing to determine the multiphysical behavior of digital concrete. If you remember, the first technical committee was about uh, aggregate, digital aggregate. Now here we are about digital concrete. This concrete is made with one kilogram of vegetal, two kilogram of binder and water. This is the mixed formulation, one kilogram, two and two. And we will provide five papers for topical, uh, topical collection of uh, material and structure journal. Uh, first, of, uh, overview of the round-robin test and three papers around thermal um, thermal properties because this type of material is insulation material, no load bearing material but it's solid and also one uh, paper on durability about the capillarity properties. First, um, we had uh, a partner, an industrial partner that provide blocks made with this vegetal concrete and um, we, you have to know that the aggregates are uh, not spherical, uh, but uh, parallelepipedic, uh, which means as fibers. Okay? Then the direction of the fibers play a role on the behavior of the material, and we go through this uh, parameter to see if the mechanical properties change with the uh, loading direction, for example. First, we measure the density and uh, we discovered that there is a certain robustness of the pro industrial process to produce these uh, blocks and the uh, density was around 300 kilograms per cubic meter which is a lightweight concrete with a variation of 2% which is nothing. Then you can see that the industrial uh, Vika uh, in France can produce easily with a good um, repeatability uh, of this material. In terms of mechanical performances, we did the test in the two direction of the cube, okay, this uh, cube of uh, 15 centimeter, uh, 15, of 15 centimeters, and you can see here that um, in the green you have, uh, this is the performances in the, you have the, the load uh, perpendicular to, uh, sorry, the load parallel to the fibers and you can see that we have 0.3 megapascal of compression strength but in perpendicular to the fiber we have 0.6 megapascal. Then we said to the, um, to the industrial, uh, to Vika, uh, that uh, they have to use the block in the good direction which is not the case at, uh, at the moment. <laughs> in fact, they use the block in the, uh, in the other direction and then they can gain 100% uh, of performances just with changing the process of fabrication of their block. Um, second finding, uh, we try to, in fact, to measure how the vegetal aggregate participates in the strength. We did some tests with digital image correlation and it was very nice because with digital image correlation we see that in fact the aggregate don't participate for the strength. In fact the strength is all um, retained by the binder because there is an ITZ interfacial transition zone around all the aggregate. And this ITZ is 
uh, really work. Then to improve the characteristic of physical concrete, to go from 0.6 megapascal to 2 or 3 megapascal, we need to improve this ITZ with a better compatibility of the binder with the vegetal aggregate. Second parameter, thermal conductivity. We know that this vegetal concrete is uh, almost um, mainly uh, good for insulation. Then we want to see if all the measurement method, transient method or steady state method, uh, give the same results because there is no standard for such material to measure thermal conductivity. Then we compare several methodologies with CT meter, hot disk method, and modified transient plane source here, CTERM. It's a system at the University of South Brittany. And also the steady state method. We have to know that, for example, hot wire methods take one, two minutes to measure the thermal conductivity. But with hot plate, you need three, four hours to have this measurement, which is not the same. The result, finally, that in dry condition, which means uh, we dry the material before the test, we find that the thermal conductivity is around 0.08 Watt per mètre Kelvin. Sorry. And all the labs with different type of apparatus give exactly the same result with a very light uh, variability. Uh, if you make the test at 50% of relative humidity because there is absorption of the vapor in the air, the insulation uh, jump to 0.1 Watt per mètre Kelvin, which means that this material is very sensitive to the relative humidity of, uh, which is good in fact, because uh, you have a thermal regulation, regulation of the humidity, uh, depending of the humidity of your room, the material can pump or can give you more humidity. Okay, then uh, we recommend to use hot wire method because it's very rapid, very quick and uh, it's uh, really robust uh, in all conditions. The second parameter was the water vapor permeability. Uh, we did it with uh, dry cup method and wet cup method and um, about this, for example, we, um, we discover after two round orbit tests, in fact, there is a huge impact of the air velocity where you do your test. Because we find that the labs provide the value between 2 and 8 for this water vapor permeability. First, we didn't understand why there is such variability from 2 to 8. And we discover, in fact, it's the air velocity because in the standard, there is no information about what air velocity because this type of test is provided for concrete and concrete is not sensitive to this parameter but our material is very sensitive to air velocity. Third, water, uh, third uh, parameter, moisture buffering value of vegetal concrete. This is the most important thing and we know that the comfort coming in earth material or vegetal concrete, when you go in a house with this type of material, you go, oh, it's very comfortable. And you don't know why. There is acoustic, there is hydrothermal regulation, there is a lot of things. And uh, we did uh, also a round orbit test with the different methodology, um, starting from the north test, uh, protocol and, uh, and then we discovered that for such material also air velocity is very important. In Brazil they measure uh, MBV equal to 4, in France they measure uh, MBV equal to 2 and other uh, labs is 1.28 and in fact the difference of this value is coming also from air velocity. Then for water permeability and MBV we have to take care at what air velocity you measure it. And we decide the recommendation 
will be to measure it at the lower possible air velocity and then we have to find climate chamber with air velocity uh, you, where you can um, uh, measure or you can drive the air velocity which is not the case actually the climate chamber you have only one air velocity and you cannot change it the last parameter was a durability test capillarity behavioral hot concrete we know that this is a lightweight concrete very porous very sensitive to air liquid for the thermal is more vapor and humidity uh, have an impact on the performances of the, the material but about durability is the liquid have an impact on the material and we go to this uh, capillarity experiment uh, we put the box uh, or the cube of uh, vegetal concrete in 8 mm of water and then we monitor the change of mass of uh, cube and we try to see if there is an impact of the direction of the fibers on the result and how uh, between the labs the results um, uh, vary. Here is some results of the different lab of this test. You can see that the slope is almost the same for all the labs but the initial rate of absorption the initial capillarity is different because in fact the methodology to do the test are different following the labs and there is no standard on this test for this type of uh, material. We try also to see if uh, the law governing the behavior of uh, this material is log normal low or uh, square uh, time uh, here the time is in square time and here is logarithmic because in fact there is two possibilities uh, maybe it's like a washburn law which is something like diffusivity parameter k1 or ca and here the initial rate of absorption or here is little k parameter And in fact, we discover that whatever you, you, you can take the two type of flow and from zero to six hours log time model works really good. And then you have something diverge, then it not works. Uh, but for this uh, square time model, you can go until 48 hours. Then it depending what you want to do if you want just to see what happened during the six first, first hours or you want to have the story until two days. This is uh, the, a comparison of uh, initial rate absorption of log model uh, around four kilograms per square meter and here the value obtained with the square model you can see that there is a variation uh, here almost uh, six seven kilogram per square meter and here for the diffusivity parameter we need more tests to understand what is not uh, go, uh, what is not well in the protocol to have exactly the same value and not depending of the model and the protocol that you take. Finally, the principal conclusion of all these round orbit tests is that for mechanical, uh, the mechanical behavior is very sensitive to duration of aggregate and direction of loading. And there is an important potential of improvement if we uh, mobilize the strength of the aggregate by a better interfacial transition zone. Uh, I think about thermal properties, about thermal conductivity, we have no problem to measure it, but for, air of, but for MBV and water vapor permeability, we have to take care on air velocity, 
and the lower is the air velocity, better are uh, the correspondence between the labs, but there is a need of adaptation of the protocol in use to fix this uh, problem. And about the capillarity test, there is to be initiated all the protocols for a better determination of this initial rate of absorption and diffusion uh, parameter in the models. To know more or to see an overview of all the possibilities of vegetal concrete and earth material, this low carbon, I invite you to the 50th International Conference on BBM next June 2023 in uh, the beautiful city of Vienne in Europe. And here we will present uh, again all the results of the technical committee and also uh, at this time we will finish to write all the uh, paper of the topical, solution, uh, topical collection. Thank you for your patience. I finish.